You can't be frauding people every day. Stop. Abiyome, Abiyome, take time. Oh. Listen, I'm a man of God. Stop. You kill people every day. When you yell somebody, you steal it. Don't quote it anyhow. You steal it. Most people, all their retirement benefit, you take it for once and people die. I pause it in the name of Jesus. A prayer will not work. You cannot cause your hope. It cannot work. Listen. Stop. 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 If you're in this church, stop. It's a demonic, satanic way of getting money. What kind of nonsense money is that? It's like you're a thief. No matter I colorize it, you are a thief. You love stealing. Okay, is it your money? I pause the root of it. Stop! That's not the kind of money we are talking about. Stop that nonsense. Scam kills people. Some people, the whole of their retirement benefit. You now scam them and say you are buying car. What not? You get that with that car. I cast it. I cast it. You know they cost politician. Why you know go cost politician? Because now they're there in church. Now they they buy the private jet for them. Now they they buy the big big motor. All the big big motor where a bio man they drive. Who they buy it for? Her? Stop that nonsense. You are a child of God. Don't take that kind of money. That's that blood money. Blood money. What kind of money is that? Stop it. You're a child of God. Okay, whichever way you paint it, you're a thief. What dignity does a thief? Now, all people doing Yahoo, stop giving them chief title. They are thieves. Why would you give a Yahoo person chief title? He's a thief. Deal with them as an arm robber. The way we're not favor, they go call them. The politician, when you go cost them, they die. You don't cost them. They can't cast Yahoo. And Yahoo will cost them. Is it? You stole from somebody now. Okay, what do you call someone who stole from somebody? What is it? It's a thief now. What are you talking? Yahoo is stealing. Don't, don't say it's Yahoo is stealing. Stealing is stealing. Oh, oh, oh Yoshi. Politicians are duping money every time. They they run call evil now. I'm not going to cost them. And these days, even church people are doing Yahoo. It's becoming a young boys will not walk, will not do anything. They sit on top laptop, send you a message. You have just one, one and some of you too. I don't know. How can someone say you... you Bring me a, a bank, a bank details you said. Are you okay in your head? You too, you too, you love money. Oh. Somebody will tell you, bring your bank details. We'll pay you 800,000. What did you do? Anybody who fall Mugu, you too, you, be, you love money. What will they say? We'll pay 2 million to your account. So give us our account details. You now send your account details. They detail you. Please, Yahoo must stop in Nigeria. Yahoo, I, what is the lead name? Stop calling the Yahoo. Yahoo is a is email, is email. Fraud. Internet fraud must stop in Nigeria. Internet fraud must stop. And police, all the Yahoo boys jail them. Arrest them. If you take bribe from Yahoo boy, the policeman, that money kill you. Blood money that you take will kill you. I know I've looked at this video before if you have followed me over time, but I think sometimes I have to discuss some of these things again because I've been getting questions from new people who get to meet my person and then my discussions about things that happen in the church, even though I discuss other things they would never see. Listen, I think what Pastor David Ibiyeme has said, it's very wonderful, very true. Please, can we clap for him? <laughs> let, let, let's clap for him, let's clap for him. That, 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 that's amazing, I would say. But you see, of course, Yahoo must stop in Nigeria. And when it comes to Africa, I would say, <laughs> Nigerians are the ones that even get to have more of the bad tag when it comes to even internet scam and all that. And he gets to address his church members. This was like last year, back in 2022. Reactions were raised about this. But you see what? This is video as well. I'm doing this. Most of you will not share this video because it's against what you believe in. And it's okay. No problem. One of the greatest Yahoo that I have seen myself in the church that happens in the church on a daily is the manipulation that comes with fighting and offering. I am not joking. I am very serious about this. Who are the perpetrators of this manipulation? Of course, pastors themselves. But if I'm talking, you say, who are you to even talk about this? 
who are you to talk about what happened in the church? Oh, Antichrist. Read the comments. It's not as if I'm just talking. Read the comments. You see them. Hajri, Judea, Hakanko. One, one leg, one, 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 one leg. There's someone I always make reference to when I get to discuss about this. So it's not a typical Nigerian kind of gospel. Let's look at the person of Zach Ponin. He's run a church for over 30 years. I'll give my opinion after we watch this video. Please look at the video on the top while I get to play it. Tithing is a old covenant commandment which is not required now because you never read about any command to tithe in the new covenant. There's no rule of 10%. The new covenant law is 2 Corinthians 9, 7. God loves a cheerful giver, so when you give, don't give grudgingly or under compulsion. So the important thing in the old covenant was how much, 10%. In the new covenant, it is how. Not how much, but how. Is it cheerfully? And it is not of compulsion. The reason is, <clears throat> the old covenant, God was not a father. Jesus was not a husband. The old covenant, God was a master. And tithe was something like paying income tax. Compare tithing with income tax. Does your husband require income tax from you, wives? No? Well, then God doesn't require it from you either. <clears throat> Does your father require you to pay income tax as a son? It's a master. Why, do, why does the government of any country collect income tax if it's honestly collected, honestly used? It is to pay the government workers who need to be paid. Israel was a government under God. And God said, you got to pay your income tax, which is, it was not money. If it was a farmer, he brought 10% of his grain. If it was a shepherd, he brought 10% of his flock. And it was given to the government workers, which is the Levites. Because they didn't get any other salary. They were not allowed to have no land or be shepherds or grain. How would they live? These people were giving the money, as told by their master God, it was a government, to pay the government workers. Now, today, that whole relationship is gone. God has become our father. We're not in a government. The church is not a government. It's a family where God is our father. Jesus Christ is our divine husband. And the relationship is different. There is no income tax in a family relationship. That's why tithing has been abolished. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean we don't give anything. I mean, if, if you're living in a home with your parents and your parents are not working and you boys and girls are working, would you support your home or not? I hope you do. I mean, if your father's um, earning, so I'd say, when you come to a church, a lot of people think, well, that, just means, I, that means I've got to give nothing. Well, I'll tell you, a conference like this costs a lot of money. Running a church, you've got to pay rent for a building, you've got to pay electricity, you've got to pay so many things. Where's it going to come from? From those who cheerfully recognize their responsibility. I mean, you wouldn't think of going and renting a house and not paying for the electricity bill or the water bill or the rent. But I look at it exactly the same way. It's not income tax. There's no law. And if there's one child in the family who's not working, he doesn't have to give anything. But here's another child in the family who's earning a fantastic amount. He gives more for the support of the home. It's like that. So it's a family relationship. If you don't think of it as calculating uh, how much do I give, I say, are you part of a family or not? If there's a need in the family, you meet it. And there's no pressure on giving at all. And if you have a need, go and meet that need. And if you have a debt, go and clear that debt. And that's why in the New Testament church, we, in our churches, we have practiced this for 40 years in about 100 churches. No offering bags passed around anywhere in all these years. And we have proved it in the poorest communities and the richest communities in India. It works everywhere. If you seek God's kingdom first, put God's principles right. We have never till today had to pay a mortgage on a single building. Every building we planted, built a number of church buildings, always paid for fully, no zero debt in any of our churches, and um, never had to borrow money from anywhere. There's always enough in the offering box. I remember in the early days when we were meeting in my house when the expenses were zero. And we'd open the offering, offering box, there'd be two rupees in it, which is about three cents. And that's all we needed then, because there was no expense. And when the needs became hundreds of thousands of 
millions of rupees, God provided that too. Now, I have never been against you tithing or you giving offerings to church. I've always been an advocate of the fact that every venture runs with money. But what I've always been against from Genesis when I've been discussing things happening in church is the manipulation that comes with the whole idea of giving. Because like I always tell you guys, whether you are tithing or whether you are offering, what is a common factor in these two things? It is money. Like you've heard discussed, I've said this many times, it's more about your attitude of giving, not the amount you are giving. If 10% is what you can give willingly and cheerfully, please do give it. That you don't give 10% could not put you under any curse. Like some people will say, if you don't tithe, you will not go to heaven or something. What is more important is the attitude for which you give. I'm not picking on Pastor David Ibiyome, but this is just an example. Look the way he gets to talk about you, how you get to get results from your needs from God. And compare what he has said here to what Pastor Matthew Oshimolowo was criticized for or is known for. Listen to this. 50 times of Christ plus 50 men of God praying for you times zero equals what? When you cry 50 times and 50 men of God pray for you and no offering to be a point of contact is zero result. Anything multiplied by zero is what? So when you don't have any point of contact that God will use to multiply your blessing, it ends as zero. Why does the word say we should raise seed? Because seed, once it leaves your hand, it determines the future. If there's no seed, there's no harvest. Prayer is great, but God responds to seed. He doesn't respond to need. If God were to respond to need, it's so big that he, there will be no need on earth. But when he sees seed, he responds. When seed is sown, the atmosphere just needs to be right. The seed will have to grow. Even if it's sometimes even in the wrong location. But I pray for you that you will not plant in the wrong place. You understand? So everything has to be added with money. I came across this when I was scrolling on Facebook here. And when I see these videos and I just discuss about them, you see people in the comments saying I am criticizing. I am just giving an example for what I'm discussing because this is something very popular. Like tight or things to be tight for you. If you are suffering, check your offering. All these are manipulative rhymes that are used to coerce people to give. But if you are able to teach people the truth of the word of God, you don't need to manipulate them. You don't need to do bring up some rhymes and all that because you want them to give. Till I see you next time, the name is George. Hey,